Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and investigated Unguard's uh, little hotel room here. And in this episode, we're going to go ahead and investigate the other one that we haven't investigated yet. Uh, Corita's hotel room. <laughs> uh, if you look up, uh, I know there's a lot of bears here. The bear in the top left corner there... The thing with the fish in its mouth, that's the one from Kurine Village that, you know, is being sold as a souvenir and also the one that was found in Grossberg's office in the first game. I wonder if there are any more cases in the Sears that have that bear statue in them. Mr. Nick, where are we? We're in Mr. Juan Corita's room, Pearls. Mr. Corita? The victim. Which makes this the crime scene, too. <clears throat> oh, it's you. So, what's happened? The kidnapper. Has he contacted you again? Not yet. Probably won't until we win Mr. Unguard's some quiddle. Um, you doing okay, pal? Hanging in there? I just want Maya to be alright. We don't have a lot of time left, but I'm gonna help you as much as I can, pal. Can you do that? Even if we want to look around the crime scene? Just this once. Special circumstances, right, pal? I'll even tell you everything I know. But you've got to keep quiet. It's my neck on the line here. Thank you. Oh, that's right. I got you guys a map from the hotel, pal. Here you go, little missy. Wow, you're giving it to me? Thank you. <laughs> Wouldn't want you to get lost in a hotel too big for your own good. Mr. Nick, I got a map. That's great, Pearls. Um, but Mr. Nick, I can't read what it says. Well, let's go ahead and take a look here. So yeah, we've just got a basic map of the place. And so you can sort of get a feel for the layout here. Nothing too complicated. I don't think any of the maps were ever comp are ever complicated in the Ace Attorney games. I might be forgetting about one, but... Eh. Let's look around, though, because there's a lot to look around at. There's even two screens here, so if we press L, we look over here and there's even more bears. Oh, I can't, I can't investigate the Kurine bear. And there are all sorts of things in this refrigerator. The carrot juice bottle and the tomato juice bottle are both empty. Empty? It's too much of a hassle to throw them away, I guess. They're all vegetable juices. Guess he must have been a real health nut. Oh, there's a beet, some ketchup, and a bottle of strawberry jam, too. Maybe red was his favorite color. Wow, there are a lot of bears. Alarm clock ones, collector's editions, stuffed teddies, plastic models. It's pretty overwhelming. Is there a kind of bear he doesn't have? There's even a few in the trash can. Yeah. I get the feeling maybe the guy didn't really like bears. <laughs> Poor teddies. It's hard to bear with all these problems. Growl. I don't think I want to bear with the trauma the last case caused me. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? So yes, in-universe, Phoenix also thinks that Turnabout Big Top sucked. Hmm. <laughs> It's so messy here. Pearls really likes things neat and tidy, I take it. There are a lot of electronic things in here that I've never seen before. Hey, Mr. Nick, tell me what they are, pretty please. Okay, that over there is a watch. You wear it on your wrist. I know what a watch is. Oops, for a second there, I forgot I was talking with Pearls, not Maya. It looks like Mr. Corita had a dinner last night. This bottle, it's tomato juice. He had a lot of food at the award show last night, but I wonder if the stars had gone on stage after only eating a meager meal like this. And this is a guitar case, I guess. A little beat up, but it's still usable. That's strange, the guitar is not here. Maybe you forgot to bring it to the show. But Mystic Maya, she said the bright red guitar was the Jammin' Ninja's signature item. That's true. Huh? This guitar case is wet, but it's only wet on top of the lid. 
Yeah, there's no water inside the case. This is water, isn't it? It's a beautiful wine glass, and there's tomato juice in it. Ew, tomato juice. I don't really like it much. There's a bottle of it in the table over there. It's probably where this came from. But doesn't it seem weird? What seems weird? I mean, everything else is scattered all over the floor. She's right. The flower vase was broken and the makeup is strewn everywhere. Why is, th why is this glass the only thing that's still alright? So that's a bed, right? Yep. It's a it's big, but it's a bed. Ah, Mr. Nick, it's so soft. Big beds must be a rarity for her. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she just sleeps on a floor in what's pretty much a sleeping bag. Oh. Now that we've got everything, Gumshoe, have you seen my badge? What do you know about this? Um, there's nothing special I can tell you about this, pal. Looks, pal. Or look, pal. We don't have a lot of time. Why don't you show me something more important? If Miss Von Grandma saw me here like this, I'd have to switch sides real fast. Do you know what was the cause of death? Well, technically the fir well, technically the final autopsy report is now yet, but one look at the scene of the crime should tell you, pal. The scene of the crime. Yeah, here's a picture. There's a knife in his chest. Yeah, pal. That's the Moida weapon. So he was stabbed to death. They're looking at the fingerprints down at the lab right now. There were fingerprints on the knife? Yup. It looks like they're pretty sure they're Mr. On God's prints, pal. That's bad. Real bad. Why is Mr. Ungard arrested? Because we had evidence on him. Evidence? It looks like the victim won Karita. Uh, really put up a big fight. Yeah, one look at the crime scene and you, and you can tell. There's signs of a struggle everywhere. Well, yeah, during the fight his button came off. Mr. Ungard said something about a button. Something like one of the Jammin' Ninja's buttons got caught in his Hakama. But that's not all. What? There was a witness, pal. A witness? Who is it? That lady, Miss Oldbag. Please, anyone but her. The prosecution has plenty of evidence to make a solid case. Not to mention there's something at the crime scene that was a little off. Something that was a little off? Is in? Is in, that's for you to figure out, pal. Alright, let's try to figure it out, Mr. Nick. Hey, I'll just save you guys a bunch of time real quick. I accidentally presented the wrong thing and I got confused on what I was supposed to do next because things weren't progressing. So we're gonna come back here later and actually present the correct thing next time. Oh, Mr. Wright, how are you? Ah, Mr. Powers, have you been here the entire time? Yeah, people, yeah. People connected to the murder aren't allowed to go home, let alone leave. Are you really connected to the murder? It seems... weird. Well, oh, I really owe you one. If it wasn't for you guys... Okay, this is the same text as before. I'll stop presenting my attorney's badge to everyone. I'll present it once when we meet a new character, and then I'll stop presenting it. Because usually when you present it at other points in the story, uh, they'll just say the same dialogue. Can you tell me a little more about the Nickel Samurai TV show? Okay. The Nickel Samurai is an action hero program aimed towards kids. It's the sequel to the Steel Samurai. I see. This time, there are three Samurai brothers. Aluminum Samurai, Tin Samurai, and of course, the Nickel Samurai. It's a love why in new old Tokyo. I see. Wait. A love what? A love why. This girl, Sayo, works at a tea shop and all three guys fall for her at the same time. Oh, I guess the Y shape is like the three brothers colliding over this one girl. 
Anyway, Sayo is actually the daughter of the evil Strawberry Clan's leader. Sounds like an unusual situation. Like Romeo and Juliet. Times three. Yeah. Strange thing is, it's sort of a for- Strange thing is, this sort of forbidden love story is really big with the office ladies. Um... Yes, Pearl? What happens next? I wanna know. Miss Sayo. Does Miss Sayo fall in love? She does, doesn't she? Every Sunday at 8 a.m. <laughs> I'm going to stop watching Kids Masterpiece Theater starting this week. I can't believe she's really considering it. So what's the Jam and Ninja TV show like? It started from a remake of an old movie, to tell you the truth. The Jam and Ninja is like the samurai shows aimed towards kids. It's the story of a ninja who can't climb a wall, but became a big pop star. Uh, what? He was, he was a really lousy ninja. Absolutely couldn't do any ninja things right at all. But boy could he sing. With his trusty bright red guitar in hand, he took the ancient world by storm. Uh, a ninja with a bright red guitar? And then, the final fight in front of his beloved Princess Misola. German vs. Mur Muromachi 5. Suddenly, our brave hero catches the not so jammin' cold the night before Battle 3. Aw, oh, that's too bad for him. Y yeah, but this kind of pop music based love story is something high school girls really like. Um. Yes, Pearl? What happens next? I wanna know. Jammin'. the jammin' ninja. Will he be able to sing? What about Princess Misola? Every Sunday at 8 a.m. Um, which show should I watch? Hmm. I can't believe she's really considering it. So another point of interest here is we want to go ahead and present Adrian's profile. She's someone we haven't really gotten any information on so far, so let's go ahead and see what we can find out about her. Hey, that's Miss Andrews. She's Matt's manager. Actually, I was interested in her for a little bit. Just a little. Hmm, so Mr. Powers likes this type of woman. What do you know about Miss Andrews? Well, see, here's the thing. I don't really know her, know her you know? There's sort of a small rumor going around about her right now. A rumor? Well, uh, if you're interested, I can give you a little bit of the details. He's so happy. Looks like a lion that's just found his next meal. Would you mind telling me about this gossip? Oh, so you're interested in it too. I figured you would be. Yeah. I have such a weakness for celebrity gossip too. Oh, really? You too, huh? Yeah, so take a look at this. Looks like a tabloid Miss Oldbag would read. Alright, let's see here. Jammin' Midnight Rendezvous? To the mysterious yet beautiful manager to the stars, Miss A.A. Y you see now, don't you? What? You could stop pretending to be in the dark, Mr. Wright. Juan Corita didn't have a manager of his own. Which means, if we're talking about a certain manager with the initials A.A. Adrian Andrews? Yes, exactly. This is big news. But it seems kind of odd. That woman, Miss Andrews, together with the biggest rival of her client? Oh, it's that wonderful thing that can only happen between two people. Mr. Powers looks so happy. Pearls is just following along, not having any idea to why he's smiling. Well, like the saying goes, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. It's not really a thing you should say about women, Will Powers. Anyways... Let's get out of here for now. Alright, this is the point where I looked around and I eventually found out what I was supposed to do. At this point, you're supposed to uh, present the glass of juice to Detective Gumshoe. I meant to present the wine glass. So about this wine glass. Ah, uh, so you noticed it, pal. The whole crime scene was a mess, but this glass was the only thing that was untouched. You noticed that too, Detective Gumshoe? No, actually, Miss Von Gum, I noticed it first. Yeah, Pearls noticed it before me too. Hey, wait a minute. So, does that mean Miss Von Karma's coming here? Yeah, she's coming. Man, you're gonna be in so much trouble, pal. I think it'd be best for you if you didn't bump into her here. You can bet the instant I see her, I'll be running the 1,000 meter dash. Uh-oh. She's on her way. What's that beeping noise, Mr. Nick? Hmm. I've heard this sound somewhere before. 
It's Miss Von Karma. Huh? Whenever I hear that sound, for some reason she pops up from nowhere and whips me. Come to think of it, that did happen the last time. Sorry, I gotta make myself scarce. Later, pal. Yowl! At last, you reveal your true nature, Mr. Phoenix Fright. Would it be too much to ask for you to be nice to me for a change? So you're the type to steal information from a pitifully hopeless detective. That's very dishonorable of you. Ow! Hey, don't you dare run away, scruffy McTrenchcoat. Uh. I didn't have to think the detectives of this country would be this pitiful. Ugh. Detective, come over here for a second. Yo! Hmm. I feel better knowing that at least you are man enough to face your punishment. You're so scared he just froze up on the spot. Mr. Phoenix Wright, you, you have soiled my perfect prosecution record. I'll never forget that. This is time. Victory is mine. Victory is yours? Is that all this means to you? What? Humph. <laughs> Come, Scarface. The investigation briefing is about to begin. Y yes, sir. This isn't over yet. I swear on my family's honor. Ow. Now, would you now what did she throw at me? What is this? Well, I guess this means I gotta get back to the precinct now, pal. If you ever need me, come down to the criminal affairs department, alright? If you can, try not to let Miss Von Karma see ya. So now, if we go ahead and look at the table here, that thing that Miss Von Karma threw. Mr. Nick, what's this piece of paper? It's called an autograph. Autograph? It's got Mr. Corita's name written on it. It's his autograph. I can't read it at all. To be honest, I've never seen writing that looks like this. Uh, it's a special way of yeah. Uh, it's a special way of writing called cursive. Look here. See how it says "to my dearest Wendy" in the normal letters here. This sloppy, unreadable writing. It's crazy and cruel to give this to someone. Hold on. Wendy. I've heard that name somewhere before. Yep, it's Miss Oldbag's name. Also, by the way, if I ever have to... Next time I play a game where I have to name my character something, if it has enough letters in it that I'm allowed to put in, I'm definitely going to call my character Scruffy McTrenchcoat. Alright, now we can break uh, Miss Oldbag's locks. What you witnessed. Alright, I'll be honest with you for now. Then please, tell us what you saw. But, ah, uh, what a waste. And here I have a perfectly good chance to have a little fun with you, fun at you youngins' expense. Because I am a little devil after all. Um, doesn't that imply you aren't a good person? Alright, I'll give you what you want. Here's an autograph from your favorite celebrity. <laughs> that's, that's one's autograph. Yes, it is. And it even says to my dearest Wendy on it. That's me, right? Right? Um. My name is Wendy Oldbag, so that Wendy has to be me, right? Well, it may say Wendy, but somehow I don't think that Juan had this Wendy in mind when he signed it. Oh, please give it to me. Let me have it, please. Uh, uh uh. I can't let you have it just like that. Yes, yes, I know. Then how about an exchange? Wow, she must really want this autograph. My offer isn't good enough for you? Fine, Mr. Wright, you win. Wendy Oldbag, ready to open up her heart. All for my dearest Juan. Autograph given to Wendy Dearest. <laughs> Alright, I think that about wraps it up for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to figure out what Wendy Oldbag witnessed. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!